Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Maria, in case you don't know me, and I am the owner of Buffling Beads AT, a shop for handmade beaded jewelry over on Etsy, and also a second shop where I sell Czech glass beads and brass supplies. If you want to check out my shops, you can find the links down below. A few weeks ago, I posted a tutorial on the flat peyote stitch, where I showed you how to weave with the even and odd count peyote stitch, the flat one. And today I would like to show you how to make a super small and dainty bracelet with this stitch. You can also wear this bracelet as an anklet. Um, I've also made whole sets before, which included a bracelet or anklet together with a pair of my sheer hoop earrings. So for those hoop earrings, you can also find a tutorial on my channel. They match very well, um, even though the sheer hoop earrings are made with a brick stitch, but also for the brick stitch, you can find a tutorial also on this channel. So if you want to make a whole set, um, today when I've taught you how to make these dainty bracelets, you can do so. You will find all the information that you need on this channel. But if you're not into DIY jewelry or jewelry making or beading, you can of course also get in contact with me via my shop where you could request such a jewelry set if you're interested. So today I'm going to show you how to make these bracelets. And as most of my pieces, I usually make them in some kind of color gradient, which you can see here. And today I'm going to show you the rainbow one, because that's a pretty popular one. This color combination, you can get it for free, so you don't have to pay anything for this color information. I will also note it down uh, in the description box to make it easier for you. So if you're interested in making such a rainbow one, one no one's stopping you. And I will use brass supplies because I think they work quite nicely for this bracelet. So then, let's hop right in. For this bracelet, I use six different shades of Miyuki Deliga 110. These are all transparent lustered. And then for decorating the edges, I use Miyuki Round Beads 150 in the matte black shade. So I will get them on my mat first. There happened an oopsie. Uh, seems like I threw in all my 11 or demi rounds in there, so I will need to sort these beads, but that's not going to happen now. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's quite a surprise, but it happens. Okay, so now we've got the beads. Then, for the thread, I will use Miyuki beading thread. There's one. It's a nylon thread. And it has the metallic champagne color because I find that it matches very nicely with brass supplies. Then you will need a clasp, some kind. I usually use lobster clasps. These are tiny. Uh, this one should be about maybe 0.9 centimeters at most. They are pretty small. Then you will need some tiny jump rings. Then what I usually do is I provide some kind of extension chain. 
I use this one for brass bracelets. And then to make it a little more pretty, I like to use a small decorative leaf at the end of the extension chain. There are so many different dangles out there and charms that you could use. I think it's fun to put something on there. As you may notice, I will not use wire guards this time because I think that it that it doesn't look so nice um, on these bracelets because they are so slender and small um, that it looks clunky and I've never had complaints before so I will just stick with it how I do it now. For a bracelet that is about 17 centimeters long which is quite the norm I would say uh, so that's quite the average that customers order in my shop. It's about 17 centimeters. I would use three arm length of thread and that's usually a lot. So I usually have lots of thread left over so it should be fine. But with bracelets I usually prefer to use more thread than too little because then I would need to add thread to a bracelet. And that's quite tricky if you have a small and dainty one. So I prefer to not do that. So we will need the tail thread to weave in one of those decorative edges. So I will place my two fingers at about one arm length of thread, like this, so that the working thread has about two arm length of thread. And there I will thread my needle and then we will start with an even count peyote stitch. So before we start beading, let's check the color pattern. You will notice that I always use four beads of the same color and then I switch to the next shade. And when I'm done with the last shade, I will start over with the very first shade that I use. The LGBTQ color scheme starts with red, then it's followed by orange, yellow, green, blue and purple. And then you can see that I start again with red and then I continue along. The pattern is pretty simple. You will just need to count to four and then switch your color. We will first beat the main part of the bracelet, which is the peyote stitch in the middle, so the colorful part. And then later on, when we're done with the whole length, we will then add a clasp, so this beaded loop at the end with the clasp, and then we will add the decorative edge. So in case you want to know more or want to learn more about the peyote stitch, and some tips and tricks that I find handy to know. Please check out the tutorial on the basic beading stitch. You can find it up here. I will also link it down below. So first, you would pick up two beads of your first color, which is red in my case. And you will push it down to that location where you placed your fingers in the first place. Then you will pick up another red bead or a bead of your first color. And you will go back down through that very first bead you placed on that thread. like this. And then you've got a little triangle. Then we pick up the fourth bead, hold tight, and then you go up through the third bead you just placed. So one bead of the triangle that sticks out at the top. That should be the third bead that you added. And now you've got the 
base of your even count peyote stitch. We will now continue with the next color. You pick up a bead of your second color and you go back down through that bead that sticks out, which is the fourth bead that you placed on your thread. And then you will just continue like this. Pick up a bead and you go back up through the bead that sticks out. Pick up a bead, go back down through the bead that sticks out. Pick up a bead and go up through the bead that sticks out. And now you will need to pick up the next color. Always hold tight to your beads so that they don't become loose because then your bracelet will look wonky in the end. And you don't want that, I guess. Now you pick up green. And you will continue with this until you have your desired length that you need for your bracelet. Keep in mind that adding those beaded loops and the clasp will add about, I would say, about 1.5 centimeters to the length of your bracelet. So just keep it in mind so that your bracelet doesn't become too long especially when you plan on adding an extension chain. I think I reached a good length, so this is it. This is the whole peyote stitch. And now we will continue to add the beaded loops. So for this I take up two Miyuki round beads, one Miyuki Delica bead in the color of that end part and then two more Miyuki round beads, like this. And then I will just go back through both those last two beads on that peyote part. So because I usually place my jump ring right where I added that Miyuki Delica bead, I want to have this bead stick out. So I do this by going through those Miyuki round beads again and skipping the Miyuki Delica bead. Pull it out, pull tight, 
and you go back to those two beads again and you pass through all those beads in that loop one more time. And again, you will go through those two Miyuki Delica beads at the end of your peyote stitch again. And now you're right in the spot where you will start adding the decorative edge. But before we're going to do this, I will add the loop on the other end. So for this I will just take a second needle, you thread your tail thread and you do the exact same thing on the other end. So I'm switching back to the other end, doesn't really matter, I mean it's the same thing that you need to do for both ends. And I then add the decorative edge by taking up three Miyuki round beads and then I go back down through the bead on the right hand side from the bead that I'm coming out of. So that, I, so that I place a group of three beads on top of two Miyuki Delica beads. Then you go up through the next bead. You take up three beads and you go back down through the bead right beside the one you're coming out of. Go up again. Always pull in your thread in between those Delica beads so that you don't see it. Back down again. Back down again. done with the first side. 
Then you just turn it over and you will do it all over again. that is all done now and the only part that's missing now is securing the thread so tying knots weaving in the thread so that your bracelet doesn't get loose and for this I'm just going to weave in the thread and I will tie three knots as I usually do Not right in the beginning, but because there's so much thread in there already that I don't want to accidentally destroy a bead. Here I moved my thread a little more into the bracelet. I used the thread bridges in between those beads to tie my knots. Put your needle in there, like this. Tie a knot. And then you pull the knot into that bead. It goes down again. And I'm in the same spot again, just that I moved a little more towards the center. And again, I will get one of those thread bridges like this. and pull that knot into the bead. Pull it down again. Same spot. You get that red bridge. And you pull in that knot. Like this and then I cut the thread. You do all of this again with the other side of your bracelet, the other ending.
careful not to squeeze the glass bead with your pliers because it probably won't survive survive that. So this is the way I add lobster clasps. Then on the other end I will get some kind of extension chain. And if you want to, you can add some kind of dangly charm at the end. So this is the finished bracelet. The original one I shot before looks like this. Exactly the same. And that's how I make my Canon bracelets. You can find them under that name in my shop. I will put the link to those bracelets down below into my description box in case you're interested in checking them out or which color combinations that I use. Uh, but I think they're quite fun. You can stack them easily because they're so simple. You could also stack them with some macrame bracelets, for example, or some other dainty metallic ones, or some bracelets made of cord. That could work quite nicely. But yeah, they are a super beginner friendly project if you are new to beading. Uh, you don't necessarily need Miyuki Delica beads for those, but it's going to be easier because they fit into each other quite snugly and nicely uh, and seed beads are round. So you may get a wonky bracelet if you use seed beads, but technically you could do it. That's everything I wanted to show you today in this little tutorial. So if you like this tutorial, you can also check out all the other tutorials I have on my channel. I also post chatty content or studio vlogs in case you want to see more about my small business that I have. And yeah, if you like this video, please consider commenting and liking it and also maybe subscribing if you're curious about the things that I'm going to post in the future. For now, I'm out. Thank you so much for watching today and hopefully I will see you in the next one. Bye!